Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's broadcast on increasing MS productivity. A self-driving mass spectrometer designed for non-MMS experts by Patrick Cronan, an LC application scientist at Algilent. And I'm Susie Valdez of Labroots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Before we begin, I want to encourage everyone to engage with us. You can submit as many questions as you want during the presentation. Simply type them into the ask a question box on the left and click send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, just click on that support tab found at the top right hand corner or use the ask a question box on the left. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Patrick Conan. Welcome Patrick. Hi, welcome to Agilent Technologies Center of Excellence in Lexington, Massachusetts. And I'm Patrick Cronin. I'm an LC application scientist here at Agilent. And I'm going to be talking to you today about the newest single quad in Agilent's portfolio, the LC MSD IQ, which you can see here in front of you. Um, as you're aware, Agilent has a long history in single quad uh, instrumentation. We started back in 1997 and we've Evolved the single quad into um, the newest LC MSD series. One of the major changes here from, from our 6120 and 6130 is that you can now stack the LCs directly on top of the mass specs. One of the best additions to this LC MSD is the LC MSD IQ, which is our smallest single quad mass spec. Um, as you can see here, it's on our flex bench MS part. So the roughing pump in its quiet cover, the LC MSD IQ, and the LC can all be on one mobile station that can be moved around the lab or to different labs within the organization. In addition to the IQ, which is the best transition for LCUV methods, um, as this presentation continues, we also have the LC MSD, which is our work. Um, really great for mass directed purification systems, um, and our LC MSD XT, which has an extended mass range up to 3000 AMU, which is great for our intact proteins of large molecule separations with decomposition. So, when we look at the LC, uh, LC systems that we have, we have a whole portfolio from 1220 to 1290 Infinity 2. What we're showcasing here is our newest LC system, which is the 1260 Infinity Prime LC. So we have a flexible pump up at the top, a uh, bio sampler with an integrated column compartment, which I'm actually not using today because I have my 1260 MCT here, um, which we'll get into in a little bit as we take a little deeper dive. Diode array detector here and our mass spec column. So, what keeps LC and LCMS users up at night, right? We collaborated with the Atlanta analytical scientists, excuse me, to, um, to get some more feedback from the field. What do you guys want from us? So um, some samples are going to push us beyond our limits, right? If we can't, we don't have a UV chroma or it's a volatile sample. Um, we're concerned about hidden impurities, right? What is inside that sample? That's everything that we need to. Um, too much time refining methods. And so taking these LCUV methods that we've had that are validated and we've been using for years and then transitioning them to a mass spec method takes a lot of time. We have to know exactly how to transition this method to change the mobile phase to um, change our settings to make the mass spec work. And then unpredictable downtime, downtime right? If we have a mass spec, what happens if we, you know, clog the needle or or something breaks, how do we how do we fix it? So um, mass spec is going to add certainty, clarity, and confidence. So if we look at the inset here on this chromatogram, we have the UV chromatogram there, and we see three peaks. Great, all right, three peaks, we can run our purity check. But as we run it through the mass spec, single ion uh, monitoring in the mass spec, we see five different compounds when we monitor those ions. So we're detecting two more compounds. And when we do a extracted ion chromatogram, you can actually see 
boosterone and trazodone co loop but using extracted ion chromatograms and single ion monitoring, we can pull them apart and detect them, even though they're at the exact same retention time. A UV chromatogram, you can't pull those apart unless you physically separate them on the column. So adding mass detection to your lab, right? Easiest way is the LC-MSD IQ. It's small, it's compact, it is the size of an LC module. When we say that, it is the exact size of a biosampler or a multi-sampler. Same depth, same width, width, same height. So the total stack width, 15.6 by 18.7 inches deep by 12 inches tall for the LCMSD IQ and the biosampler. So they're integrated with the LC stack. The other benefits here are we use 110 voltage, right? So we can plug this directly into the wall takes about 30 minutes to pump down. So if you do need to use this mass spec in another lab down the hall, you can unplug it, wheel it down. The, the quiet cover connects to this the flex bench MS, and you can wheel it down to another lab, plug it in, and within 30 minutes, it'll be up and running and running your samples in that way. So now we're going to take a live look at the system that's right here in front of me. So first, we have our LC uh, prime, our prime, 1260 prime LC, and what's that? LC MSD IQ. Uh, this is our 1260 prime LC. Uh, it has an onboard degasser here, it's a portioning valve for quaternary buffer blending. A one pump head here, but each uh, pump head has two pistons with independent motor drives, so we don't need a pulse stamp, so we get much less delay volume with this pump. Uh, right here is our inlet weaver. So we have a mixer prior to the pump head, which gives binary-like performance by really mixing the motor phase thoroughly before it goes out to the, the auto sampler. And then here is the um, automated purge valve, so you can purge your system and then automatically it will start flushing the system in the column. This pump and the complete LC stack is an 800 bar pressure range. So you get a little bit higher pressure, not uh, 1300 bar power of the 12 month, but we get some better pressure range here so we can take advantage of some, some micron columns for a little bit faster separation. Um, moving down, if we look at the auto sampler, we open these doors here. This is our vial sampler, so it's an 800 bar sampler here, pressure range. We expanded the capacity so these trays slide out. We have 132 vials versus the older vial sampler with 100 vial capacity. And on board, we have a peristaltic pump that does a, a needle wash uh, before or after each injection. Uh, this is designed so you no longer need a wash by a dynamic wash that will wash the outside of the needle and then go out to waste. And then also here, this here is our integrated column compartment. Right now, I'm not using this because I'm taking advantage of some column switching capabilities we have down below. But you can plumb up the two columns in here and manually switch between them if you have two different methods that you'd like to run. So with a pump, an auto sampler, and a mass spec, you have a complete system that you can run and uh, temperature control your columns. So now down below here, if I zoom out back to my full view, uh, you can see our column switching valve here. I have three columns plumbed. This is a four column switch valve. I have three columns plumbed and the fourth is resolved uh, left for a bypass so I can flush both ways through, which is important. What we're doing, we're doing UV only methods. We want to run some sodium phosphate or different things. Then we want to transfer over to mass spec. We can use this bypass very fast for a very fast flush of the system to get all the salt out. And then from here, we move on to our, you know, diode array detector. Um, whether you need it or not, most people will have a diode array in line before a single quad. And then our LCMSD down at the bottom. So the LCMSD here, we have our standard electrospray source here, which very nice thing here. This is the, the one source that works with this system. Uh, it covered ninety percent of the molecules. Need to ionize, um, but when you open it up here, it immediately goes to standby, so you don't have to worry about any shock to your, to your body, to any of your lab workers. Um, and then inside here, we have an onboard divert valve with most of the aspects that are out there on the market, and all of the aspects that actually makes 
So this is designed so if you do have a salty sample, you can divert or maybe some crud or DMSO or something in your sample that you don't want to get to the mass spec. You can divert, divert the first minute or so to waste so that you keep your source clean. The other nice thing is the ongoing tune solution here. This will slide out so you can change your tune solution or do any maintenance on your solenoid valves here. And this just floats away. And then the last thing down at the bottom is our quiet cover for our roughing pump. So the rough pump sits inside here, keeps everything quiet. There's a fan in there to keep the heat down, mitigate the uh, temperature control. And then this quiet cover slides in underneath the flex bench MS and then it locks in place so everything feels as one big unit. So, if we move on, okay, and we go back to the slides, if we're talking about the mass spec one, it's very small, it's compact, it's easy to use, right? It fits right to LC stack, you can move it around your lab, but it's also intuitive in, in the software is very easy to use, smart as well. So, the first thing we have is instrument health track, right? So we want to know, similar to our iPhone, right, the, the battery in your iPhone that starts to come down and you know, oh, I'm at 20%, it's going into low power mode, i got to find a place to charge it, right? We want to instill the confidence that this mass spec is working well in your lab. So we have the instrument health tracking here, which will count down depending on when the last time you did your check tune was or an auto tune was or when you need to check change your detector you're going to have this in your lab for 10 years you're going to probably need to change out some of the capillaries or the um, ion uh, injectors detectors etc and those can be done at pms as well and then this health counter will just track things for you so the early maintenance feedback the emf is going to constantly monitor and report the instrument performance. And then it's a clear user interface so that you can see very quickly when you need to do some maintenance. Other part here is that the auto-tune and check-tune can be scheduled. So rather than coming in and locking the system and doing the tune manually, you can set this up so that because this tune solution is here through the divert valve can be plumbed right into the source, this system can tune every morning or every Monday morning at 5 a.m. before anyone comes in. Then you get in, you see the tune report, you can make sure everything is passed, and then go about your day. Other thing I just mentioned was the ion injector, otherwise known as the capillary. Right? The capillary is here. It, it takes the ions that are formed in the source and feeds them back towards the ion optics that are optimized by the, the tune that we just talked about. So this is the ion injector, you know, it can get dirty. If you're running dirty samples, it can get dirty. It's a, it's a consumable. Just like a column can get dirty and stop uh, performing as well, so can the ion injector. Nice part here is that when you take the capillary out, you no longer have to vent the system. We have a tool that screws onto the front and pulls the capillary out. You can put a new one in, clean the old one, or just have a spare on hand, um, and you can do this all yourself without even venting. So even the detector is a toolless task, right? When you, well, it's tool toolless in the sense that actually changing the detector is toolless, but you have to take the covers off and kind of slide some things out. So maybe the one tool you need is a Torx wrench that un undoes these two screws so that this whole tray can slide forward and then you have access to the side panels in the front of the mass spec. So now, talking about the software, right? We talked about the small, you know, the small nature of the mass spec, how it fits in the stack, how easy it is to use. We talked about um, the early maintenance feedback and how we've designed this so that you know when your system is performing optimally. And we also have the software. The system works with OpenLab 2.5, which is a the newest software uh, platform that Agilent offers. Um, very simple, very easy to use, very intuitive, very uh, acquisition, spans, um, it's the same instrument control fr framework that's used in you know, Mass Hunter and ChemStation, uh, just advanced a little bit more in the data analysis side. So if we talk about mass spec, right, we have our UV methods, we know how these um, 
validated methods, sodium phosphate, long gradients, really good sharp peak shape and, and uh, good purity results. Now I'm gonna put this mass spec on. So how am I going to build that method? How am I going to, to transition from this UV method that I have to a mass spec method? Now, the first thing you're gonna need to do is change from a non-volatile buffer to a volatile buffer, because we have to evaporate. We have gas and temperature in here that's going to evaporate the mobile phase. So we can't have sodium phosphate. So what a good transition, a good change, a very mass spec friendly buffer would be formic acid. So that's probably the, the first place you're gonna start is do a 0.1 or a 0.05% formic acid in water and a cedar nitrile, right? And we'll transition this method over and then we want to run into our mass spec. But how do I know how to set all this up? There's temperature settings there, there's voltage settings there. I have no idea what to do. So the first thing is how can I make sure that I'm seeing everything, right? When we saw three peaks in the UV and then five peaks in the mass spec, I want to see that, but I don't know how to do it. So the best thing we can do is use auto apply. So within the OpenLab CVS 2.5, we have a feature called auto acquire. So the first thing you have to do is just input the mass range. All right, I know my the analytes in here are between 200 and 500 AMU. So that's where I want the mass spec to scan. So as soon as you input the mass range, the mass spec is gonna read the LC flow rate that you set in your method and then set parameters to make sure that we can desolvate all of that liquid that's coming through. So in the acquisition method, you can see under the, the single pod, when you highlight the single pod, you have auto acquire. Now that's the default. The default is auto acquire. So as soon as you set up a new method, it's automatically going to be here. You set the mass range that you want to look for, This in this case, 100 to 1000, and then automatically the system stuck here there we go automatically the system will make that change for you right conversely if if you're a seasoned mass spec user and you know how to set all these features and you have methods that you want to translate all you have to do is click under advanced acquire on the acquisition tab and it one will prompt you do you want to leave auto acquire and set your own settings and if you do just make your method exactly as you would with any other mass spec, right? Set your capillary voltage, you set your um, desolvation temperature, you set your nebulizer uh, gas flow, all of those things, and you optimize your retention that way. Well, here. So if we take a look at an application, right? So my active pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical ingredient, excuse me, are my APIs pure, right? So we'll do a rapid analysis. Um, not so rapid because we're transitioning um, a validated method. Um, and then we'll look at the sample purity workflow that's built into this system, right, with, with report templates already set in the, in the uh, software. So here's our 1260 LC methodology. We're running an Eclipse Plus, longer 2.1 by 150 column, uh, two microliter injection with 20 millimolar sodium phosphate at pH 5.5. Uh, and then just pure cedar nitrile. So I did this, I just found some um, validated published methods for some over-the-counter you know, pain relievers, right, ibuprofen. So this is a five to 95% B, percent ACN gradient over 12 minutes. And the stop time is about, is 20 minutes. So the run time is about 22 with the injection cycle time and our pressure is about 500 bar, well within the range of this pumping system. We have 800 bar of pressure. So if we look at our uh, API QC method, we can see, you know, very pure. This is ibuprofen, looks good, right? UV only, so we're taking the assumption that that is ibuprofen. If we have injected ibuprofen, we would expect it to be there. And then we see the other impurities, and we can see we're about 96% pure. Looks good. So also over-inject, right? So we want to inject... 20 microliters, saturate the ibuprofen peak so we can see all these smaller impurities and get some accurate quantitation of how much is in there, right? And that's what we normally do. We'll do a low microliter injection, a high microliter injection, kind of look at the uh, relationship between the API and the impurities of the sample. 
So nice thing about the IQ is, again, depending on the sensitivity and the ionization efficiency of these molecules, we can run everything in one method. We'll transfer out the sodium phosphate to formic acid and then flush the system. We can use the same column. Uh, in this case, what I have on the system now, what I just showed you, is actually a smaller column. So we can go a little bit faster if we wanted to. Um, doing the same gradient, if all we do is change the mobile phase and change, uh, add the IQ, the mass spec to the end of it, we can now set up these settings on our own or use auto acquire exactly as it's designed to be done. So we have the same runtime, the same gradient, different global phase, because that's essential, and then we're using auto acquire. So when we look at the separation here, we have ibuprofen, pain reliever, it's a 206.29 molecular weight. So when we put in the target formula of C13H18O2, we can run this method. Ibuprofen is detected um, at 7.076 minutes. There's an extracted ion chromatogram for the molecular weight and the molecular ion um, because we input that target formula. And now we can pull this out. And based on the UV uh, chromatograms, we see we're about 90% pure because we're seeing some of these other uh, peaks here. Now, the nice part here is the UV peaks in the late later eluding uh, part of the chromatogram, 9 to 12 minutes, they're not really showing up on the UV here. But you, we can see them in the mass spec, and then we can even tease out some more information. Maybe there's some stuff in the sample that isn't uh, being detected, right? But the nice part, based on the formula and the, um, the sample report templates that are automatically included with the software, we can input our target formula and immediately get a report that says, is the target found and is it pure? And this is all set through the data analysis processing method. You can tell the purity cutoff. If you want anything to be colored green, you can say, I need it to be 95% pure. I have it set to 80%. So obviously the target is colored green, it's found, it's pure, uh, and I can move on with my day. So from soup to nuts, right? You can plug this system in in 30 minutes. You can be pumped down and ready to go. And using auto acquire, you can translate these UV only methods over to mass spec friendly methods and use our uh, sample purity workflow to very quickly find target compounds or unknown compounds within the matrix. So, a um, couple of innovation minutes that we have online just the product overview, similar to what we did today, the ventless maintenance with the back shield so we can change the ion injector. Um, walk up with rapid submissions. We actually have walk up software, so you don't have to set the method. You can just come up, log in, put a sample on, and, and an expert user behind the scenes kind of creates the methods that you allow the walk up users to use. And then just a general overview on Open Lab CDS and a couple of the changes between ChemStation and CDS. Um, and then here is our technical overview, some applications. Uh, again, the, the walk-up 4.0 technical overview. Um, we have a lot of application notes out on this system now. Uh, it's about, about two years old, a year and a half old now, so we're, we're ramping up. A lot of people are using it, and there's a lot more um, collateral out there that you can, can browse. But in general, the, the goal of this system is to be very easy to use, very easy to operate for even non-mass spec experts, right? So anybody, any UV user, any analytical chemist can input this mass spec in their lab and be up and running on day one. So with that, I thank you for your attention and we will have a live Q&A. If you have any questions, please uh, join me and I'd like and answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick, for that informative presentation. We will now move to the live Q&A portion of our webinar. If you have any questions, please go ahead and submit them now. Our first question we have coming already in from our audience. When I'm transferring my UV method to mass spec, what is the most important change to focus on? <coughs> Good afternoon. Sorry, I'm uh, 
in the in the building here and uh in lexington i'm just taking my mask off so you guys can hear me better um so when you're transferring from uv to mass spec the most important feature before you even think about anything the software or or changing settings is you need to change the mobile phase some uv only methods have non-volatile buffers or um, non-mass spec friendly modifiers like phosphoric acid or or, or um, sodium phosphate, different salts, those are not compatible with mass spec. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have a mass spec friendly LC method before you even start to adjust the source settings and everything afterward. Thank you so much. And our next question, if I use the auto acquire and do not get the desired sensitivity, what can I try next? Um, yeah, so auto acquire is, is designed for someone who maybe has never used a mass spec before. So you want to walk up to the system and you want to get some sensitivity before you've even, you know, read the manual, right? So it's designed to, to be a really quick uh, way to do that. If you've, you know, exhausted the auto acquire and maybe you want to try to get a little more enhanced sensitivity, you can start to adjust um, the, the advanced acquire, right? I mentioned in the, in the uh, presentation that if you choose and you click on advanced acquire, it turns off the auto acquire and allows you to adjust the setting. So maybe, you know, we've seen it before, a couple of, a few compounds that we've run um, could be thermally labile. So the, the gas temperature and the gas pressure is designed based on the flow rate that you're running. But if your sample could be thermally labile, you may be degrading it with the heat and the source. So you can start to adjust those, those temperatures, the gas settings, um, the voltages to try to, uh, get a better sensitivity for your compound. Thank you so much. We have one more question. Now, does the auto acquire, can it be working with an old model, um, like an MSD? So, yes. Yeah, so we have um, three models of single quads, right? The, the IQ that I just mentioned, the LC MSD and the LC MSD XT. These, um, our evolution of, of newer, of older models of the, of the single quad. So the IQ is designed to work with OpenLab CDS 2.5 or 2.4 and, and above. Um, and that driver for the auto acquire was built into that software for the IQ only. So right now it's only available on the IQ and it's not backwards compatible to um, the other versions of, of software or the other models that are, that are out there. Thank you so much. And we've got John Sawson joining us. He just wanted to comment, perhaps adjusting the pH, set the module mm -hmm. phase to be one to two pH units different than the pKa's of the analyte. Do you want to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, so yes, he was, um, that was in, in really, uh, response to the uh, mobile phase choices when you're, when you're looking to move from a uh, non-mass bent, non-mass spec friendly buffer if you're trying to define something just setting the ph one to two ph units different than the pka of your analyte is usually a good place to start it doesn't have to be formic acid or ammonium formate or things like that that i had mentioned in the presentation but enough uh, far, far enough away from the ph of your uh, pka of your analyte that you'll get some ionization on that molecule Patrick, this has been a great presentation. Thank you so much for your time today and for your important research. Do you want to provide any closing remarks before we go to our audience? No, I'd just like to thank everybody for listening and thank you guys for putting this all together. And as a reminder for our audience, I want to remind you that questions that you did not have time to submit today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed via the email address you provided at the time of registration. Thank you again so much, Patrick, and to everyone who participated today. We hope you will check out the Agilent Exhibit Hall and enjoy the final presentation right after this. Take care, stay safe, and stay healthy. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks.